What is up, brothers and sisters? It's Jay Campbell, and you're listening to the Jay Campbell Podcast. Join me for regular deep dives with amazing beings whose work is manifesting a golden age. And remember, you create your reality by your focused thoughts, conscious words, and intentional actions. Raise your vibration to optimize your love creation. Hey guys, what's up? It's Jay Campbell and I'm making a quick commercial here for seercustom.com, my revolutionary cosmeceutical peptides company, co-founded with my business partner, Nick Andrews, who happens to be one of the world's top formulators. We have the revolutionary Oxano Grow, which completely regrew my hair. If you guys saw my hair about a year ago, I was almost bald. I even had the micropigmentation program from uh, Advantis. And now I've completely regrown my hair. That's just with version one. Version two is now in the marketplace or will be very, very soon. And it is three to five times as more effective than the current version or the original beta version of Oxano. We also have Royal Blue Serum and Sky Blue Cream, which will completely upgrade your face. I mean, I'm almost 50 years old. I have a pretty good complexion. I use it regularly. My wife swears by it. It will reduce fine lines and wrinkles, dramatically improve elasticity, and just the overall look and feel of your face. You feel great on both of them. You can also use them with red light therapy. There's all sorts of great stuff. So go to a seercustom.com. And if you're a first time customer, use the coupon J15 to take 15% off your purchase. I appreciate all you guys. And I send you tremendous love and light. Well, hey guys, what is going on? It's Jay Campbell, of course, the founder of the Jay Campbell podcast. And I'm very excited today to be joined in my new StreamYard virtual studio with an amazing human being that I've been corresponding with for a couple of years now. If you can actually believe that, it started in 2019. Bonnie J. Bonnie, how are you? I'm good. How are you? It's so awesome to have you here today. So guys, Bonnie is pretty much a celebrity, if I could say that, uh, in India. She does all sorts of amazing stuff. She's an actress, a fitness model. I mean, she promotes all sorts of different things. I mean, she actually was introduced to me I think through Chris Gethin, when I did a podcast with him about a year and a half ago, actually it was in 2019, man, time is just flying now. Um, and so her and I have been speaking um, online through the beautiful WhatsApp for a long time, and she's a pretty amazing person, and we've had some very deep conversations. So I've wanted to get her on the Jay Campbell podcast for a while now, and it's finally here. And even better, she just got out of India and flew to New York City. So she's actually in the States right now doing this podcast, which is pretty amazing. So Bonnie, let's just talk before we get into our subjects, like, and I know I don't want to go too deep and I know it's pretty depressing and the world is pretty messed up. And today is May 6th, just for the marker, um, Thursday, May 6th. Um, what is going on right now in India? Oh, uh, I don't know. It's almost as though everything that can and, uh, could have gone wrong with the, how they're handling COVID has literally happened. Um, only it's so horrifying. We get so many videos and messages that, I mean, I got some really creepy ones this morning that I even showed you right now yeah. about, about how doctors are fleeing the ICUs and stuff like that. It's really, really, really like, it's horrific basically. And it's kind of a situation where no one would want to be, uh, sick or even have COVID or anything like that, because it's just like no handling of it by the government or they are just so overwhelmed by, you know, the number of cases and the lack of frontline workers that we do have everyone is so overworked and just going beyond that it's really taxing the system obviously and now literally people are you know trying to crowdsource funds and trying to get oxygen cylinders from abroad and stuff like that so yeah it's literally like instagram and twitter has just become a way to amplify situations for people to try and get them to donate money and then do what you can and you know what doctors orders are going around and stuff like that so but you're you were telling me off air that there's obviously so much corruption in the government there. I mean, obviously all the governments right now are corrupt. Yeah. So it's so strange. Actually, more than corruption, it's just like there's no acknowledgement of responsibility that's being taken. And there's just like I feel like they just want to blanket what's actually happening and what the real number of cases are nobody even knows. And everyone's just like, no, that's not the real number. And it's just like, what do you believe? You don't know what to believe. You don't want to believe that it could be so bad and that your government yeah. could actually be behaving in such a way but then that seems to be the blatant truth that you kind of have to like face every day and you're like oh my god but you have to be hopeful about it but then what do you do because every day you're waking up to more and more horrific news so, yeah 
Yeah. Well, I mean, I've been very outspoken about this and obviously this is just you and me private right now, but it'll go on Google and YouTube. So, I mean, yeah, they delete it, they delete it. Who cares? I'll have the file, but uh, this is to me, and it always has been from day one about two things, money and population reduction. Okay. Whoever is in control of this planet, and we'll get to that at some point in the show is just wants less of us. I mean, that's obvious, you know, between the mask, between the fear, between taking kids out of schools, I mean, it's just become insane in the last year and a half. And, and, and irregardless of whether or not COVID was created in a lab in China, was a bioweapon, is a bioweapon, it's gotten worse, has mutated. None of that really matters. What matters is the fear that they have instilled in the, in the, in the human public all across the world, which, as you know, now is leading you know, people, especially, and I want you to talk about it, like in places like India. Or as you were telling me, and I know this through the caste system, but people live in such small confined areas that there is no possible way that they can socially distance. So can you kind of just talk about for, you know, for a, a Western audience who's really not as familiar with India, um, what it's like with lockdowns there? So, I mean, I can only tell you from what I know from people who come to my house, like supposing like my maid, like she's the sweetest thing, her name is Nita, and she's been working with me for like, I think at least eight years. Um, when, like when she came to work for me, she had just gotten married and now she has two kids, two daughters, and she lives literally five minutes away from where I stay, but where she lives and how she lives is very different from how I live and how I stay. So sure. she, like I stay in a huge ass apartment with just my dog, and then she has her husband and two of her uh, daughters who live in one little room which is probably wow. less than 100 square foot honestly speaking it's probably smaller than 100 square foot and they do everything in that one room absolutely everything so when we talk about you know we have to social distance please wear masks and like uh, um, stay at home for people who have one room and like this is just a family of four there's families right. of like eight and ten and fifteen there's joint families in india because that's the culture you know you stay with your your uh, immediate family and then you stay with your extended family as well because they're all about family man we like to stay together right um and so for them to kind of have to socially distance a a now firstly they don't understand what social distancing even means they're like what does that mean why don't you stand away from you right you know because right. them it's like an invisible thing you can't see covid until somebody actually has it and they're like sick in a hospital bed and they like die from symptoms or whatever it may be right so for them it's just like what is an invisible thing everyone's so scared about and why do we have to wear a mask and what is this and and also, it's not ingrained in us at all in India to have any kind of personal space. There's no space for personal space in a place like India. You know, like whether it's like you're getting onto a bus or you're getting into a train station or you're getting to an elevator, whatever it may be, there's this thing called train mentality, which is like, oh my God, the train's going to leave. Everybody just has to like squeeze in like a pack of sardines and get as many people in there as you can. And then let's go. That's literally how it is. Like I used to use the trains back when I started working at MTV and seven in the morning, man, we'd be the train station. So for it's like 10,000 times worse for these people because I can afford to like get into my own car and go to places and have the social distancing and all of that. But they can't afford to A, not go to work, B, stay at home and wow. C, then socially distance. Like how? When you're trying to, it's like, it's like, you know, when you're living in survival mode, you don't have yeah. the luxury to think about these things. So yes. that's what all of them are doing. They're all living in survival mode and it's horrible. And then you're just running on adrenaline. So you're more prone anyway to just get right. sick or whatever it may be. And this is horrible. I, I mean, honestly, I, I can't even imagine. And that's another thing too. And, you know, I know this from my business, you know, India has a population six times greater than the United States. So people in the United States really can't comprehend that until you go to India, right? Until you're literally in a city like, yeah. you know, uh, New Delhi or, or, or uh, Mumbai, and you see yeah. the massive numbers of people and so they can't really comprehend that. The only thing I could tell you is that I, when I went to Japan a long time ago, Japan has a very similar, you know, they're overpopulated, very crowded. And you could stand, you know, their, their, their understanding of personal space is probably similar to what people have in India. So it's like, if you, you know, for, as an American, a guy Jing, you know, I was there and I'm standing in line to go to a movie with a bunch of other guy Jings and like a bunch of Asian, you know, Japanese people got in front of us and we're like, what the fuck is going on? Right. But that's because. They, were so they, they don't have room. that space rule. Yeah. yeah. The three foot versus the six foot space yeah. rule because they don't have that. Yeah. And so I, I can't, I can't imagine how must it, how yeah. bad it must be in a place like India with social distancing and all this bullshit. Like with all these videos and stuff that come out and on the news, you know, cause even from here, every time I go anywhere and I see a screen and it's all about reporting in India, I'm, right. I'm sitting over there looking at the screen and it's like, I don't believe that what is happening. Like I right. don't believe that it's gotten so bad. Like it's yeah. so serious. Like it's, it's just the way it's been handled. Which is yeah. Been handled, so. 
well, you, as you and I were talking off air, motherships, that's probably the next, that's probably the next move. All right. Well, let's get, wow. before we get into the motherships, let's, let's just talk about the things that you and I wanted to talk about a long time ago. This, and again, this podcast for the audience was planned a long time ago and COVID got in the way. Um, so I want to talk about spirituality. Now, obviously that's my jam now. I know it's a lot of your stuff too. It's what you talk about. It's what you and I have talked a lot about. Um, the planet, we could make an argument <clears throat> that the planet right now with all this fear and all this bullshit with COVID and everything else that's behind it is kind of like the dark night of the soul for the planet, right? Like everyone now is being tried. It's the tribulation. It's the revealing. It's revelations. It's the end times. I mean, however you want to look at it, but it's like, it's the time for people to really, truly recognize what is important. Or it's obviously a choice for them to recognize what's important. Um what, what are your thoughts on spirituality? Just like what comes to your mind when you talk about spirituality? Um, well, source energy, first of all, and aligning with it. And then the fact that any, absolutely anything that you want is possible in the world. Um, Beautiful. But, but also it all has to be, it, it's all positive energy, right? So it's a pure positive energy, which is basically just love, basically. Um, but it's that's the simplest way to explain it, but it's obviously <laughs> way more complicated than that. No, I mean, I mean, it's true. I mean, um, I mean, that's it. I mean, love really, you know, I've been reading a couple of books, um, uh, the, the, a book called the impersonal life that was written in like 1906 by this guy named Joseph better. And it's just, it's about the, I am presence and what it means. And, you know, he broke it down really, really in a, in, in a really profound way to me, at least, you know, from an, my opinion standpoint of just like, it, it, it's what you just said. It's love. Yeah. It's like literally that's allowing you your- Whenever we've yeah. talked, we're like, it's always love. <laughs> it's the purest. No, I mean, it, it, but it is. I mean, it's, it's how you communicate with people. It's, you know, it's how you hold yourself in your conversations. It's not being reactive when something happens to you, you know, because the, the, the popular culture, the media, whatever, you know, the, the influencers around us in the background, that's all they want us to, Bonnie, is to be in fear. They, they want us to be reacting. Like you said, survival so programming. That's what they want people. Because it's the most profitable thing for them. Right. Right. 100%. Yeah. yeah. That's exactly right. Man, the world is so screwed up right now, but people like us have to continue to put forward the energy and the frequency of the love and positivity and all the other things. I mean, I mean, we, we, we have the opportunity to help people who don't have the opportunity because they still can watch us on social media. They can still watch us on YouTube. They can watch us on places that we show up. So to me, it's like, you know, how can we set the highest and best example, you know, for them of like still, yeah, things are tough out there. It times might be dark, but there's still goodness and there's still greatness found in each and every one of us. But, you know, each of us has to believe that you have to actually, you know, manifest yeah, you that. have to believe it. That's true. It's all about belief systems. It's so, it's so ingrained, but that's also the biggest conflict for so many people because it's, it's so simple once you understand it, but then it's so difficult for someone who's in a situation with so many of their predetermined beliefs and everything else based on their situation. And they're so used to seeing things the way they are that they just are not allowing themselves to see it any other way. And they're like, no, but I want to see it in order to believe it. Nah, bro, you got to believe it in order to see it first, right? Like yeah. believe it within yourself that it's possible. And then, you know, everything else will follow through. Yeah. So I think that's, it's, it's really hard to explain that to people. It's easier to show them with examples. Like you just said, when you are just out there living your life and people be like, but how are you so untouched and unbothered by everything that's happening around you? I mean, because if I focus on anything that's negative, then guess what? All of my energy is going to go there and then it's going to come back to me as well. So, and I can really understand that people right now, because, you know, it's easy for us to say it right now, because I mean, there's nobody in my family touch with who has COVID or anything like that. But for people whose families are in the ICU, they don't have a bed and they can't even get access to oxygen. How do you explain this to them? How do you explain it to them? How do you explain to them to just let go of worrying and stressing and then, you know, try and find some gratitude in the moment where they are there? How do you do that? And then how do you even, you have to be receptive enough to, in order to hear somebody say this to you, right? So if the reception isn't there, then anything that you are, you or I are even trying to say to somebody, it's just going to like bounce back. So that's half of it, right? That you don't feel like the channel is open for you to send your message across. So you just wait. 
that's it. Or you wait for people to like come to that conclusion of themselves, have that awareness, awareness and be like, okay, I'm ready now. There must be something bigger and better out there for me in order to, you know, get where I'm supposed to go in my life. So that's beautiful. Yeah. It's, it's um, all, all you can do. And uh, I mean, everything he says is beautiful. I mean, all you can do for people that are in that energy and frequency of pain and victimhood and suffering and sadness, you know, like you just explained, like the people in the ICU is yeah. you could just send them energy of love and light, but you know, you can just, you give them space and you send them that energy. And then, like you said, you just have to wait. And, and, and it, you know, cause the truth is, and this is so brutal and painful to like realize, and you know, it takes a long time of doing the inner work to get to this point, but our higher self, right? Our spirit, our soul, we, we are creating a reality so that it can evolve and grow in these physical bodies, right? So the pain and the suffering that you may be experiencing or your mom is experiencing or someone in your loved one and your family is experiencing, they're actually at a soul level doing that yeah. to evolve and grow. And that to explain that to someone who's in that victimhood and that strife and that grief at that moment is very, very difficult. But when you can see things from that level, you realize that everything is done for the benefit of the soul. Yeah, true. But that's the whole thing, right? Because how do you get someone to see it that way? Yeah. Nobody wants to see their loved ones in so much pain and suffering and feel like, no, but this is what's supposed to happen. And this is the way it's supposed to be. It's also not the only way. There's so many yeah. other ways that are less painful and, you know, there's no suffering involved in your evolution. It doesn't have to be this painful, wallowing, sorrowful way to the light. It's That's not what it is. And I've met so many people that think this way. They think that, you know, without pain, there is no gain and stuff like that. Right. There is. Of like, course. You just have to choose that. You have to right. believe that. And you have to wake up every day and literally, like, affirm it and, you know, believe it, like, with all of your being that you no know, man there is another way and it doesn't have to be painful and i don't have to suffer and i don't have to be alone and i don't have to you know watch people near me die and stuff like that that's beautiful i mean it's true i mean i, I yeah i mean uh the, the the i i i do think you know we can we get into talking about like reincarnation and stuff like that but like i really do think that the soul is on a path that takes a while to develop and grow. Like, I feel like, you know, we descend into these third dimensional state of being or this awareness and it's very, very dense. You know, if I always use the vibrational scale, you know, it's at some point, all of us are down here, right? We're all in victimhood. We're all in like, it's not my fault, yeah. you know? It, so it's the path of like, you know, coming into the dark part of, of awareness and then, you know, rising up, you know, a great author that it, I think I turned you on to a long time ago was Walter Russell, you know, and his statement is we are all born into the jungle and the path is back to the top of the mountain. So you can, you can realize that from that statement that like, we're all walking the same path. It just, some of us are walking it quicker than others. So like you said, like the awareness of it doesn't have to be struggle. I love how you say you don't have to be alone. So think of how many people say I I'm just they believe that. Yes, they believe that they are meant to. And I used to, it was a belief of mine for the longest time as well. Cause I was just like, I would hear it from people to me saying it to me all the time. They would say, Oh my God, you're so strong. And uh, how are you ever going to, you know, find somebody. And, and I was like, what do you mean? What does being strong have to do with any of that? And like, Oh my God, you have so many tattoos. Like, how are you going to find somebody? Cause it's like Indian mentality, right? And an aunt of mine actually said this to my mom. Like she has so many tattoos, who's going to marry her? And I was like, "What? Did you just <laughs> what? Like I was like sixteen or seventeen, and someone said this to my mom. And my mom, thank God, she was just like, um, well, thankfully, I mean, she's like, I would hope that the person that she marries would like her for her tattoos. You know? Yeah, like, that's was, awesome. Like, this is a bizarre conversation. I was like, what is happening? But this was back then, and I was like, oh my god. But also you learn so much by witnessing people, right? So like I, I've learned so much from basically watching how much my mom suffered when I was growing up. And I saw so everything that she was living in her life. I was like, man, I don't want to be like this when I grow up. I don't want to be alone and think I'm going to be alone um, and, you know, not be financially independent and think that because I'm sick, that this is my... Uh, this is like a death sentence that I have to carry with me and how it's like affecting her being sick. Like she, my mom had uh, Leo my Leo myosarcoma. She had this really red oh, wow. since I was like three. So I grew up watching somebody who had defined themselves for the longest time with this uh, diagnosis. 
And there were definitely periods where she would like get out of it and then she'd be fine and you know the, the cancer would remain really dormant and then it would just like suddenly act up when obviously she was going through something difficult in her life that was causing a lot more resistance and then right. she would go back to her, you know, uh, her period and thinking and all of that and her beliefs. And so I was like, dude, I don't want. And I realized while watching her that this is something that I don't want. And they are, it's like the most basic principle in your life that the minute that you do realize what you don't want, you realize what you do want. Exactly. You know, it's literally like that. So when I hear about people complaining about where they are in their lives, I'm just like, and I keep waiting and I'm like, and, and, and does it brings you to a conclusion of what you, where you don't want to be. Don't say you hate your job and you don't want to go back tomorrow. Tell me what you do want with that realization. What do you want? You want to go to a job then that you love to go to and you can't wait to go there. You know, like finish that sentence, finish that thought, like where that awareness is like right there at the end of that sentence. Let's just push through like, and so many people are just stuck in that loop of like, no, no, no. And like, that's, that's so beautiful. How many brothers and sisters do you have? I have one. My it's oldest a bro sister. Your brother, is it your brother or your sister? Older sister. Older sister. Oh, yeah, that's right. You told me about that. So is your mom still around? No, she passed away three years ago. Three years ago. And it was it from the, the cancer? Yes. It just got, okay, so, it just so, got to the point where it was just all over her body. And obviously, then she was just like, I'm done. So, yeah. So, so something very interesting about what you said, which I told you, you were a master before. We're all masters when we realize we're masters. Yeah. But um, when I first started talking to you, what people and I, and you know, obviously working in the allopathic healthcare space, like I do, and I'm constantly telling people this, you know, and I'm not the testosterone bro anymore. I'm the vibration bro, right? Yeah. When, when I tell people that, see, you you intuitively watched it with your mom, but all diseased states it doesn't matter what it is yeah. i can name 50 of them right now you know various diseases of aging they all come from a traumatized spirit yes. and when the spirit is you know amputated traumatized beaten abused whatever if you don't seek as that person help to integrate that spiritual trauma you will eventually die from the disease and i can just see your mom it's true. It was my, like, I can, sorry, I'm cutting you off. Oh, good. Please do. He, in her first marriage, which was to my biological father, he used to abuse her physically. Right. And, and uh, she basically got out of it and she was able to get a divorce. And, you know, but obviously this was back in 1991 in a place like India where people don't, and in Punjab, North India, people don't, people don't a, get divorces back then. Right. Uh, different story now. But back then, nobody used to get divorced. Nobody used to go back to their father's house, as they would say in India. And also, then it becomes like this stigma. Oh, my God, she's divorced and she has to right. talk. Oh, my God. Like, this is whole thing. And so, I don't know whether it was, again, this thing that she believed about, you know, this stigma that she's, that did exist. Or maybe it wasn't as bad as she believed. Um, and so, then, it just, like, was this label that, you know, like a scarlet letter A that she just, like, carried on with her. But hers was a C and a D, which was like for cancer and divorce, basically. And she just let it like play her her whole life, yeah. And it was really, it was sad to see it play out the way it did. But she had pockets in the middle where she like you know would find little moments of relief, like she converted to Buddhism. And then, but then again, right, religion plays this huge role of us yeah. trying to escape so much of our situations, and it is, it's like a coping mechanism in a lot yeah. of ways. Now, so many people are going to get so mad because of what I'm saying, but I mean, I'm not hating on it. It's perfectly fine. We all have, I mean, I myself have a lot of coping mechanisms. I'm pretty sure training of my, training for me is a huge coping mechanism. Right, me. right. Um, and there's nothing wrong with that. But there is, a, there is a point in time, I think, on everyone's journey where they will realize that there is more than religion to... Because religion, being religious doesn't necessarily mean that you're spiritual. You know what no. I mean? So... But I think most people think that they are intertwined and it might be for some people, but it's such a tricky, yeah. tricky space to try and like, but I think you understand what I'm saying. Yeah, no, I totally understand. But most people are brainwashed by religion because again, religion is created by man. Spirituality is yeah. spirit. Yeah. That's, yeah. The, that's the separation. But to your mom, back to your mom. I mean, Bonnie, I can definitely tell you, I mean, I can sense it just listening to you and, and connecting with you right now. And I told you that I feel like we were very connected in past yeah. lives for sure. But your mom was a very powerful soul. 
to be able to divorce your dad who beat her in 1991 in a time where it was like almost impossible to even make something like that happen. So imagine the energy of her will to make that happen. Yeah. But then after that, I feel like she just like went back. But maybe that's, that was part of her her path. Mm -hmm. Her path was to experience, you know, I mean, cause I think that's all of us. I mean, I, I could tell you like my life, dude, like, I mean, I had to fucking attempt to kill myself. I mean, I had to like lose everything, you know, because everything came so easy to me in early part of my life, money, women, life, everything. And so I had to just hit that bottom, you know, and get to that precipice of like, fuck this. You know, I there's better, there's more out there. And and and, and now, even now, like I look back on who I was and I'm embarrassed. Yeah. I mean, it's like, how in the fuck could I have been that bad of a person? Yeah. But that's the path. And, and as you said, like, it doesn't have to be that way. Some people wake up at like six, some people wake up at like eight, you know, and they're like, wow, you know, I'm just going to be happy go lucky with everyone. I mean, there's a guy that I coach. His name is Lazarus. His real name is Lazarus. You know, he's a black dude. He's like the most, I call him the golden child. He literally has this golden energy around him and everything that he does. And every person in his life is a sleeper. His wife is a sleeper. His children are sleepers. Like every his relatives, his family, everybody, and he's just this most high spiritual. You know, he's a master. Mm. And 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 literally, you know, I figured out that he came back here in this incarnation to be challenged at every step of the way to see how he would perform. And he is, I'm telling you, man. Anybody who meets this guy is like, wow. Like you want to be in his energy. But everything around him is a challenge. And so it's like, I know, like your mom too, that your mom probably chose the path of like, I want to experience being beaten by a man. I want to experience getting a divorce. I now want to experience raising my daughter. So it's like, you know, how the easiest way to say it is when you get to a multidimensional observational viewpoint of things and you become that neutral observer you can look at everything without reacting to it. Yeah, true. When you take a, a step back into the seat of soul. <laughs> exactly. To quote right. another book. But right. yeah. 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 And that takes a long time to go from reacting oh, to responding. That's like a daily, daily practice, you know. But there's so many exactly. things you can do to help yourself respond and not react. Exactly. Well, that's where I was going to go right into that was my next talking point. Happy habits, right? Like you have to have a practice every day of your life, you know, like for example, for you, you know, you just flew out of a country that's unraveling, right? You just flew from one city to another city and then halfway across the world to New York city, you know, your time zone is your time is, I mean, time is not real anyway, right? We just make shit up to have time. Right. But like your body clock, your circadian rhythm is screwed up. Yeah. But I bet you that since you've gotten back to the stage, you've still had time for yourself because that's what you do, right? Like successful yeah, people. My, my, my discipline is spot on in terms of what I always, my, like my daily habits of, like you said, happy habits for my morning routine are pretty set in. So I'll wake up and the first thing I'll do is I'll do my morning pages and I'll write for right. three, three pages and then I'll sit and do a meditation for 23 minutes. And then I will, you know, have a shower and, you know, prepare right. breakfast and stuff like that. And, carry on with the rest of my day and then in the evening i have a routine as well meditation relax and then bed what kind of meditation what kind of meditation do you do at night right now i'm doing the joe dispenza meditations it depends sometimes i do them in the morning sometimes i do them at night um and then but usually in the evenings i like to do this relaxation one which is just like this guided meditation for relaxing your consciously relaxing like a body scan for your entire body sure that is really awesome i was also doing some tmt in the middle but uh I don't know. I, I prefer these for right now. Yeah. That's yeah. beautiful. It's 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 crazy that with all the access to information that we have now today on the planet, that more people still do not have rituals. You know, it's insane. I can't understand. I just, especially in a time like now, like you, oh. everyone is just like, oh, I want to see what's happening now. Oh, like, why? Why do you want to see what's happening now? Like, why do you? And everyone is so. Everyone that I was speaking to in the last few days from India, especially everyone's just like on Instagram, we have this option of making like a close friends list, right? So you can like add your own people there and post whatever you want. So it's not out for the public viewing. I've had a close friends list for, I think maybe for maybe over two or three years. I can't even remember when I started. Wow. 
because simply because there's so many times when I want to share something which is nice and light and funny or, or just little moments in my day. But then because the environment at that time, like supposing now for COVID, is so sensitive and everyone's just ready to rip anything apart because you're so angry and misdirecting everything everywhere that I just feel as, oh my goodness. And now because I'm here, I feel like so many people are just like, oh, you just flew out. And I'm like, yes, wouldn't you if you could? Yeah, right. You would right. if you could. You would if you could. Yeah, they're just crabs in a bucket, yes. you know. It's they just like, want you back there. They want you to suffer like them, or they want you to back be in the same shoes that they yeah, are. That's I, feel like that, like, I would never ever put somebody else's needs over my own in terms of I need to be aligned in order to help anybody else. Exactly. So if I'm not able to be connected to myself, to source, or whatever it is, then I am failing as a human being right now. I'm no good to you. I'm no good to myself. I can't do anything. So why? And I think that's a huge thing that most people don't understand. They are, and they just think, oh, but we're, we're very giving people, you know, we're very compassionate, we're empaths, so this is what we do. And I'm just like, but it's not healthy for yourself, and you will run out of your emotional resources, and energy is going to get drained. And then what? Who's going to fill your cup back? I mean, who's going to do that? You have to do yeah. yourself, you know what I mean? So I feel like enough people don't understand that. Um, and yeah, I'm sure they see it as, you know, being selfish, but. I take being selfish uh, on that account over anything because I feel way more productive and that I can do more vibrationally speaking here than there. You know what I mean? Yeah. Hey guys, what's going on? It's Jay Campbell. Quick commercial for the optimized tribe with us Navy seal, Michael Jaco and I every Monday night at 6 PM Pacific standard time. There is not a single group online where you will get the highest level Intel that Michael and I can provide you from mastering intuition to fully optimizing your hormonal health, to improving your fitness, to raising your vibration and increasing your consciousness. There isn't a single group online with two dudes like Michael and myself, helping people become the best version of their self. It's literally $99 a month and you get a 90 minute call with me and Michael every single Monday night. Don't wait another second. Sign up now at the link, theoptimizedtribe.com. I appreciate you guys and I send you tremendous love and light. I, I, I'm in agreement. I'm, I'm looking at my calendar, right? And I have it dropped down. I use Fantastical and it says, and, I, and it's still mind blowing that people don't do this, but like my day is categorized by my rituals like the rest of my day i can give a fuck like like i'll, I'll just example 7 a.m bonnie right podcast right but before that i have daily meditation okay i have my my daily affirmation okay i have like wake up and give thanks and send love to five people right so then at after you, I have my violet flame mantra, which is like, you know, I can cast energies out, right? Mm -hmm. Then I have my morning prayer and then I have another affirmation. And then I even have a water invocation because I drink so much water, right? So my whole day is this shit is in my calendar. Now, of course, I don't do every single one. Sometimes I'm involved with somebody and I opt out, mm -hmm. but it's always fucking there. That's awesome. So it's always, there's always an opportunity to get back into spirituality without me thinking about it. Because all it is, as you know, is just a notification to say, hey, dude, be grateful. Yeah. 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 I have this little one on my phone as well that is literally, it reminds you about what it feels like when you're breathing. So it's like, hey, how does it feel when you take a deep breath into your diaphragm? And I'm like, oh, yeah. So like I just see it and I'm like, I just did that. And it's like so centering just to do that. It's like, See, there you go. Yeah. Yeah. It just belly breathing. I mean, just learn yeah. to belly breathe. It's so yeah. good. It's, simplest it's absolutely thing. amazing. Well, I mean, like you're a perfect example of, as I told you yesterday, like after you, I have this like famous yogi who I'm doing a podcast with. So now like I'm, because I'm the energy and the frequency of who am I, who I am attempting to bring into my field, they're just coming back. I mean, this guy sent me a message on Instagram. Wow. And he's like, I would love to podcast with you. And I looked, clicked on his thing and I'm like, uh, okay, yeah, sure. <laughs> <That's so cool. laughs> I mean, I started looking at his videos and I'm like, whoa, right? Like, so I'm like, but that's the energy that I've now, you know, trans, I mean, I, you know, not to brag, I've essentially transformed my state of being to attract yeah. people like him and you, you know, and, and, and others like him, but that's, 
you know, it, I still think about what you said at the very beginning of the podcast, like, you know, how do you get a person who's in the throw the throes and spiral of, you know, hatred and anxiety and fear and all that. And it's y- y- all you can do is energetically send them love. Cause I totally get, get what you're saying. You cannot speak at their language at that level when they're in that total, you know, sadness, it's, it's, you can't, they don't understand it. I feel like it's, well, George Spencer calls it survival mode. Yeah, you, survival that, mode. you cannot think about meditation and you cannot think no. about being happy when you're in survival mode. No. So, and he's like, a majority of people are in survival mode. Yeah. So, yeah. That's the planet right now. Yeah. Totally. Like I said, it's the dark night of the soul for the planet. So people will have to choose, right? But everybody, as you know, you said this multiple times in this podcast, you, there will come a time where you get to choose ultimately how the rest of your life is going to be. And just make sure that you choose based on a positive, loving feeling versus a sad. Yes. Because something else you said, and I want you to, I want you to go deeper on this. And this is the, you know, again, back to what we've been saying is, most people do not understand quantum physics. They do not understand that what they focus on yes. is what comes, right? Because most people who are suffering focus on why they're suffering yes. and not how to get out of suffering. And so I want you to talk a little bit about that. You kind of mentioned it earlier, but I want to go deeper on that because I just know so many people that literally are like, my life sucks. Yeah. And, you know, it's because so-and-so or whatever, it's like, no, dude, like, your thoughts become things you have to start thinking yes. about positive things and how you're going to create a better reality than what you currently have. Yeah. There's this, um, well, I've read like all three of Joe Spencer's books and I keep rereading them because there's so many gems in there yeah. and he has this really, he's done a bunch of podcasts, which is on YouTube as well. And there's sure. so many little gems that he, you know, will sprinkle into the entire conversation. You're like, oh my God, what? And you have to pause it and replay it. And like, that's gold. That's gold right there. Like he says, "Ah." so he believes like that our genetic makeup, like you might have markers for disease in your genes, but that your genes do not predetermine um, your outcome in terms of the disease or whatever it may be that people think that they are, more um you know what is it called um that they're more likely to develop over time because it's hereditary or whatever it may be and this is something that i have really been focusing a lot on because um he basically because there's cancer in my family sure there's cancer history in my family so now what does this mean this means that i should eat better or whatever it may be i think the main thing is just that that it'll be in the back of my head and i'm like oh i might have had cancer at some point right Right. So I started to to apply what he says uh, in terms of he's got so his whole concept I really love it because he approaches everything very scientifically. So he'll give you like proper studies and data and stuff like that and show you with like diagrams of what's happening in your somebody's brain and right. scans and stuff like that. So you just have no way of contesting what he's saying because you're like, oh my god, he's so right and that's so right. true. And it's amazing because he's really telling you that environmental factors and mainly your beliefs can actually alter your genetic makeup you can actually right. do that so if right. somebody says that you have cancer it's up to you <laughs> it's right. really up to you whether you want to a believe it and b what you want to do with that information like it's kind of like okay so affirmations and positive thinking let's treat it like a placebo because he has mm-hmm. his book called the placebo effect and he literally yep. says like what what will it take for you to believe that you will never get sick, that you will always be successful, you will always find love, that people will never leave you, that you will never have trust issues, and you will be financially, emotionally, whatever whatever manner of your choosing, you know, in that space, you will be successful and abundant, right? Exactly. And it sounds nice to hear it, right? And then imagine, like, someone just said this to you every single day of your life, like, since you were a kid. You know, and you raise that child saying, you're going to be successful and abundant and you're going to have exactly the life that you want. Just believe it. And then you're like, okay, I believe it. But now what? What is the next step? The next step is actually so simple. You just have to think about it. Like in the meditations that he gives, which I think are so effective, it's not really visualization. It's more of like how he breaks down what you were saying that time, which is a man-made construct. So he breaks down the, the... he breaks down time and space in your head 
exactly while running you through this thing so that you can just be what you want to be because as we exist there are so many other permutations and combinations of our lives playing out and it just depends which one you want to play out and how you want it to play out now yep. i know it's so much information because it's it's a lot it's a lot to kind of be like what i can do that are you serious but you can yeah and i hope i was explaining it clearly but if i'm not please feel free to no 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 you're explaining it perfectly well I mean, I mean, my audience is very familiar with Dispenza, so I mean, I think you did a great job. Um, I want to give you a couple of quotes, you know, that I kind of what I do now on my podcast when I talk about spirituality and I talk about these kind of things, uh, and I want you just to expound on it. So one of the things that, and this was your bullet point that you said earlier or, you know, a long time ago that we're finally getting around to is like the difference between enlightenment and alignment, and that's profound. But before you get there, I, you know, um, I want to talk about enlightenment. Because in reality, we are all masters when we get to a level of acceptance and allowance that we are. So it's a choice to realize that you are a master, but you have to believe it so, right? And again, you know, like you were saying, like most of us go through our lives without love and trust of self. So we think we're not worthy in some capacity or some shape or form. So when you get to a point where you're like, damn, I love and trust myself. I do affirmations. I read Joe Dispenza books. I'm meditating. I'm doing the inner work. Okay. So now I, I have this great, strong, powerful awareness and belief in myself. You know, I am consciousness. Um, it's now the doing right. And I think where the problem is, and this is where I want you to expound on is that most people, especially today are caught up in the doing and not in the, in the being. Mm. Yeah, And the being, I want you to expound on that, but the being, as you know, is just, it's such a blessing. You know, it's such a blessing that I have this podcast with you right now. You're such a profound human and it's a blessing, right? So I'm grateful right now to be in this space with you, to share this energy. You know, now obviously you and I are talking and I'm asking you questions and you're responding and vice versa, but the, the, the greatness is in just the awareness that we're both enjoying this moment and that we should be not should are grateful for it. Right. But how many people, Bonnie, you know, read the books and know what they need to do, but aren't truly in the being they're in the doing. Yeah. It's because we are so predominantly uh, productive based human beings, <laughs> action based, action based human beings. So we right. feel as though if we want something done in our lives, we have to do some action in order to actually achieve it or feel like we have done something, right? right. So instead of being so action oriented, we need to be more being oriented because that is definitely what lasts and takes us further leaps and bounds as to where we want to be and how we want to be and what we want our lives to look like. Um, so it's literally, when you're busy doing something and thinking about you know your action oriented life in terms of i need to get up this early and then you get all frenzied and worried in the morning you want to grab your phone and see who's messaging you and what's happening in the life and oh my goodness and i'm late already and you know you're hurrying through everything um if that action is not inspired with the pure intention and action inspired yeah so it needs to be inspired you have to have action in your life that is inspired through mm -hmm. through meditation through joy through pure positive energy and you are and you everybody has those moments where they're like you, you just feel uplifted in order to do something it's right. so different from oh man i gotta go get the groceries and i gotta go like meet this person and i gotta like you know get this meeting and i gotta like call the supplier and i gotta make you know moves so there's such a different energy and i think so a lot of people can relate to that at least because there's definitely been actions in your life which you're doing you're making decisions where you're just doing it because you are running out of time or like, you know, you're stressed out on a deadline or whatever it may be. And it's like, it has to be done. So I'm just going to do this. I don't even know. And there's no inspiration from within. Your intentions are in place and you're just like doing shit. You're just like going through the motions. There's a huge difference in going through the motions and going with the flow of, you know, an insp inspired, high vibrating, uh, moment in your life there's like such big differences in those two sentences and i think that's where everybody gets really distracted because they feel as though if they're not really doing something that they're just uh, 
sitting there and just like but i'm not doing anything like why don't you just try and do meditation do it it'll help you so much you can understand from how you're feeling where you're going to be going in the next few moments of your life you really can i mean everything you just said is so profound I, it's hard when i'm in a conversation with someone like you because you're saying so many profound things i kind of want to just say <laughs> i mean i'm just I'm in the I'm, space. I'm giving you the space to be in the space. Yeah, I get it. Thank you. You're welcome. I mean, it's. I mean, I don't talk to people like you all the time. You know, I mean, like who are truly connected spiritually. And I told you that when I first started talking to you back in 2019. Yes. Isn't that I crazy? Feel, by the way, I that we were talking that long ago. Since then, I feel like I've grown since we first chatted. Actually. Oh yeah, you have for sure. Both of us have. But that's what's so crazy is like I remember talking to you. It feels like it was like three or four months ago, and it was literally yeah. two years ago, dude. Two years ago, yeah. That's crazy. That's how fast this world is moving. Okay, so the last comment, and then uh, you know we can talk about where people can find you and stuff like that. But uh, so, and, and again, this is your quote. So props to you, but. Um, the difference between enlightenment and alignment, you know, what does that really mean? The difference between, in, what did I say last time? Cause you read it out to me. You said some profound stuff, um, <laughs> all right. but I mean, like just in your, it's just your opinion, you know, like, I mean, so, so my opinion is enlightenment is not something to seek. It's to be, it's to choose to be love and to be light with everybody that you come across and to have no judgment. And obviously to focus on being creative with people because, right, it's, as I always say, the difference today right now, and you know this, is are you in creation, which is the divine force, or are you in consumption, right? Watching bullshit. Yeah. You know, it, 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 so you, you as a being choose yeah. creation, again, divine energy or consumption, which, you know, I don't want to talk about the dark side, but that's basically what they want. They want you consuming. They want you going from Netflix to porn, to Instagram, to television, to, to whatever, what some bullshit programming. That's what they want you consuming. What you said about have, having it be a choice, um, not having it be a choice, sorry, is being it and not chasing it. That I think is spot on. Um, I don't think so much about enlightenment. I think more about being centered and about because at least now I've been doing it for long enough, the meditation and stuff that I can completely feel it when I'm not centered, which I think is a big plus point. And I think that for most people, if you can just understand what it feels like to be centered, the moment you are thrown off your center, you will literally understand it because it's such an emotional shift, dramatic shift that you would want nothing but to come back to your center. Because everything is so much better when you're functioning out of that space as opposed to trying to chase something else, basically. Yeah. Beautiful. So bonus question, what's it like being a fitness chick fitness. in India? Fitness chick in India? Um, I don't know because I've only been a fitness chick in India. I haven't been a fitness chick anywhere else. So <laughs> it's very exciting. Uh, I feel like there's a there's a there's a few of us. There's not that many, but there's a few of us. Um, I feel like everyone's just. I feel as though everyone's just very unique, and but I also feel like everyone's just doing things that no one else is doing. I feel like one of those people. I feel like I'm doing something no one else is doing in India in terms of everything in the space that I'm in and everything. And I really really enjoy it. And I revel in it. I revel being in a space like this that I feel like I have created for myself, and I'm very thankful for it. So, yeah, and I love well, it. Well, you have, I mean, uh, so I, I'll, I'll put this up here real quick here. Uh, so I think you I just have to throw this out there. Not that it means anything, but uh, you have the most Instagram followers of anybody that's ever been on the Jay Campbell podcast. So really? I'll give, you, I'll, give you a golf, I'll give you a golf clap for that. But no, I mean, I mean, look, it's, it's, it's pretty amazing to be able to have, I think it's 1.6 million people that follow you on Instagram. I mean, I don't care who you are to have that kind of audience. It's, you know, it's a gift obviously. And I know you embrace it, but um, it's, it says a lot about you. You know, you're an amazing human being. I mean, there's no doubt. I, I just remember the first time I uh, started talking to you and I was like looking at your social media and I was like, Holy shit. Right. Like this is pretty amazing stuff. So, and I know you know this, but you inspire a lot of people. 
You know, there are literally millions of people, not many people in the world, and both of us could say this, but, you know, but there are not many people that can say that we've helped millions, right? Like that's literally the message is helping people. And Mm -hmm. it's a, it's a, it's the greatest gift that anyone can have bestowed upon them, but it's, are you, are you grateful and to, to, you know, of that? Because as you know, a lot of people who are quote unquote, you know, famous celebrities, you know, have influence or whatever are not grateful and they're living fake, fake lives behind the external. Right. And that's not hard to do. And I have no judgment of anyone like that, but you and I both know people like that. But the reality is, is that the more influence that you have, the more it is your responsibility uh, to take right action, right? And right action is just to be what you imagine yourself to give to all of your quote unquote fans, friends, audience, you know, that, that's all it is. Like be who you really are okay. at a place yeah. from the heart space, you know, the yeah. heart open space. And I think that's what being authentic really like, you know, when people say be your authentic self, I think that's what it really means. It doesn't yeah. mean trying to live up to an image of yourself in your mind. It's just being who you are without any definition, exactly. without any labels, without trying to fit into a category or trying to please somebody because there's so much of that happening. There's so much people pleasing going on and like, you know, all these content creators, influencers, celebrities, everyone falls into this trap of like trying to cater to their audience because they think <laughs> this is what you want to hear or see. And it's a, it's a trap for a reason because it works. So many people get caught up in that shit and it's just like, and then, of course, you know, the audience is smart enough. They can, like, see through the bullshit for the most yeah. part. For the most yeah, they part, can. You know? Yeah, they so can. So that's great as well. Um, they may not necessarily call you out on it, but they should. But, yeah, I just feel like that's what it is. And I also think it has a lot to do with not being uh, influenced by those around you in terms of right. not, letting, not letting the fact that you have so many followers or that people recognize you, all of this shit get to your head. You know, like I always have said, I still do that. What I do is just, it's like my day job, you know, in terms of acting and stuff like that. It's my day job. I train because I love to. Um, I seek out spirituality and meditations and alignment because it really brings me peace and, you know, makes me understand what my purpose is with a lot of clarity. Um, yeah. And I feel as though the most, the most that we can offer to somebody else is A, of course, our presence. And then B, if you're really truly listening to them, that's about it. Then it'll be the most meaningful exchange you can possibly have with somebody, which I think means so much more to me than signing a piece of paper or like taking a selfie with someone, which is just going to post on Instagram. I'd rather just have a chat with you and see how we can at least offer something to one another, as opposed to sit over there and take pictures so you can post them and be like, you guess who I met. You know what I mean? Like, but I mean, that's cool as well, man, but there's more to learn and be offered and receive than just a picture. Right. (laughs) Right. No, that's amazing. Um, And you have a podcast, by the way, too, uh, Bear by Bonnie J. I mean, you do a lot of things. I mean, I know this has just been more more me and you getting really deep spirituality-wise. Where are you going to train in New York? Last question. (laughs) Well, I I would announce it, but I don't want to. (laughs) (laughs) We'll run this three months. No, no, I'm just kidding. I'm going to run it. I'm going to train wherever I want to train, Jay. I'm I'm training my head today and my heart. That's where I'm. There you go. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Bonnie J, it's been an honor for you to come on the Jay Campbell podcast. Um, Obviously, your Instagram stuff is here now, but is there anything else you'd like to talk about or promote to the audience? No, that's about it. I just, uh, I'm so happy that we finally were able to do this. Me too. Um, You know, it seems like this was the right time for it to happen, which is when it happened, which is so awesome. So yeah, I just feel as though I just wish that more people would have um, would understand that there is. I just feel like everyone's like an open wound walking around right now, and I wish there was some way to like tell them that there is this balm available and just relax and calm down, and it's not going to be like this forever. And impermanence is one of the biggest lessons about life if we would just look at it that way. Mm-hmm. So, you know, like good news is nothing's permanent, and bad news is nothing's permanent. So right. You can, it's all about perspective, you know. Um, yeah, that's it. I'm thankful for people like you who are doing these kind of podcasts and trying to get, you know, this positivity and light and these conversations happening. I think it's so essential um, to have platforms like this and people like you. Yeah, man, that's it. And thank you to everybody who's listening and watching. And I hope you got something out of this. And I hope that it helped in some way, shape or form. 
Beautiful. Believe me, they will appreciate you. So guys, of course, um, support the amazing people that come on the Jay Campbell podcast, follow Bonnie on Instagram, uh, online, you know, check out some of her training pictures. I mean, you know, I didn't say any of this in the show, but I'll say she is amazing. She is a beast. She is amazing body in great phenomenal shape. And is obviously is a much better person. That's, that, that's the people that I interview nowadays, right? Like the people who actually look amazing on the outside, but are better on, on the inside. inside. Right? I, wonder if that's, I wonder if that's true for everybody across the board. Oh, no. Oh, no. no. It's not. I mean, I don't want to say that from a judgment standpoint, but again, a lot of people get so focused on the aesthetic that they yeah. lose focus on the internal. Yeah. It's so true. Yeah. You know, the, the internal is the only thing that keeps you going, though. So, yeah. all right. Well, guys, please, uh, as I said, go and follow uh, Bonnie on Instagram. She's Bonnie J on Instagram. And remember, raise your vibration yeah. to optimize your love creation.